Hello and welcome to the only beginner's guide you'll ever need for PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, S, X and PC and anything they ever decide to release it on in future. If any of this helps you, please consider leaving a like and a sub. I'm an extremely small channel and it helps me so much you have no idea. The one piece of advice I always find lacking in these videos is probably the most important of them all and that is how to bridge the gap between knowing what you need to do and how you're actually supposed to do it. Here I'll explain everything from getting food to staying well in an attempt to help you get from dying on the coast to thriving on the inland. I genuinely believe these are the best things to help newcomers and it's never failed me. So let's get into the video. I'm here to kick ass and take names. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Uh -huh. Firstly, I'll start with simple things you should know and do. Fresh buns. If you're new to day Z and it's raining or dark, I recommend you just quit and find a new server. I know this seems like terrible advice, but it's really not. Honestly, you don't need that kind of start enough in your life and it definitely makes things more difficult when you're searching through blackness or trying to fight off illness due to wet clothing. I don't care what anyone says, as a newbie or inexperienced player in general, it's not worth it. Once you understand the mechanics of the game, then go for it. But I feel like starting off in these situations hindered me when I first started playing. It didn't build skills, it didn't make me a better player, it just wasted time I could have otherwise spent familiarising myself with the game mechanics and map, which was hard to do when I was trying to search for food and drink which brings me on to food and drink the most immediate thing i'd recommend when trying to get food is to just eat the fruit that you have on you straight away straight out the gate whatever fruit you start with chomp it down it's taking up unnecessary space and you're hungry and thirsty from the start so don't wait get rid of it it gives you a little time to focus on getting other food and supplies which can sometimes be found near small boats so if you spawn near the ocean take a quick look around at any nearby boats for supplies but don't bother running down the coast looking for boats like some people do it's not worth it you won't find enough supplies just search any boats nearby sometimes you get lucky other times not so much but once you've looked in any close and nearby boats just start to focus your search in other places you'll find better supplies first place you should look is a house. If there are any houses nearby, go into the houses and search right there. Spawn rates are low, so you should rely on a quick dip and split tactic of each house. Don't just stop and admire the paintwork. If there's nothing on the table, beds, cupboards, or floor, or sometimes above the fireplace, move to the next house. Oh, and always check upstairs if it has one. I'll be telling you what houses you should really focus on later on and what ones are not really worth the look. Next place to search is zombies. You know, I can't tell you the amount of people who hated this as a tip two years ago. All I got was, I killed a billion zombies and I don't have any food. Well, kill a billion and one. Listen, I understand the frustration. Sometimes they don't. In fact, most times they don't. But if you just keep hitting them, I promise you, you will eventually find zombies with food as well as other useful items that they sometimes, for whatever reason, carry. But unless you have a weapon, preferably a bat, axe or similar, try not to take on more than one at a time and always try to start your attacks with a running heavy swing or attacking from behind. They are now more vicious than ever. If you can't win a fight or there are too many, run into a building, have them follow you in and then run out shutting the door behind you. It's a common daisy trick. So common that other people do it so when you go to certain places make sure nobody has run in there and locked them in for you to find if you do find tinned or canned food on a zombie or in a house usually you need one of three things to open them an axe which will ruin some of the food a knife which will ruin a bit of the food or a tin opener which will allow you to eat all of the food just combine the canned food such as baked beans with one of the previously mentioned tools Another great place to find everything from cans to fresh fruit are greenhouses. These can sometimes have food in them too. Though again, spawn rates aren't really high, so it's more of a quantity type of deal. There are also apple, plum and pear trees that grow in some gardens and they can have fruit under them. Mushrooms are in the forest at the bottom of some trees, but sometimes they can poison you, so don't favour them. It's more of a life or death thing, but the option is always there. My favourite food source personally is wild animals such as chickens which can be killed and cooked using a knife and a fire. It's quick and easy. Just listen out for the chicken sounds and track it down. There are also cows and goats and other animals. You can kill them all, you can eat them all. Oh, and a pro tip, if you punch an animal and it runs away, don't chase it. It'll eventually stop, but if you take chase, it'll run a lot further. However, and probably the most underrated way of stacking up food is fishing. A simple fishing rod can be crafted fairly easily and is such a good way to make sure you 
have enough food before you venture inland, but it takes a little effort. It's not as easy as searching a house or skinning a chicken, though sometimes it can be as easy as searching a boat because one can spawn there. Either way, the last two ways require a little effort, but can yield much better results than endlessly searching houses. It's the way to keep fed, freshly cooked food keeps you warm for a while which prevents illness, and learning these simple things which I'll demonstrate in a moment will almost completely stop your need for food and will just keep you going for hours and hours on end. Just gonna go and get me some morning wood. Wait. Wait! Picking up my sticks. Using a knife with the tree so I can get some bark and stuff. My bark is on the floor. I just think this log is beautiful. I did actually need the beautiful log. Taking a break from building fire, found some food. Now if you use sticks from bushes with rags, you can build a fire out in the open or you can just add the giant log to the fireplace like I did there to cook your food. Uh, you can light it with mat matchsticks and also flares, anything basically with a fire. And to make a hand drill, which I'm going to use here, it's just some bark with some sticks. Side note, for the fishing hook, you're going to have to get some animal bones and then carve them with a knife to make fishing hooks and then get some worms and add it to your fishing rod. Using the hand drill to light my fire, which was made with bark and love. Well, actually bark and sticks. And... <gasps> fire! As for water specifically, most city centres will have wells in them. My advice here is to learn a few of the wells near the coastal areas in the larger town so you can refill quickly every playthrough. This can be done by using Eyes of Vive. I will link that in the description. Now one important rule of water, never drink bottled water you find unless absolutely necessary. Pour it out by aiming at the floor and pressing the action button and then refill it at a well. You can get ill drinking from unknown water bottles and it's horrible to cure. Oh. And freshwater ponds exist too, that's a thing. Just find one and drink. Furthermore, you can find pots and fill them with water. They last a lot longer and they're definitely worth having. Plus, you can use them to cook food in. You can also find water treatment pills called water purification tablets. I'll show you where to find them later on. And they'll clean any water you have or you find outside that isn't from a well. But Pipsies and other similar drinks are perfectly fine to drink. They're sealed and give you lots of energy. Find these on boats, in houses, greenhouses and on zombies. It's good to know as well, cooked food will always give you more calories, which obviously fills your bars a lot higher. So always try to cook food. You can bake, you can smoke. Each one gives you different calorie intakes. You can research them online. There are loads of charts. Next is supplies. First thing, I consider clothing to be supplies and extremely useful ones. As you look for everything else, you should always be looking to up your clothing, not for style, though certain darker colours can have a strategic benefit. Each piece of clothing has a warmth rating when you either hover the mouse over it or click on it on console. You want the best insulation because a common cold will hit you quick if your temperature drops. Also, depending on the clothing itself, your carry space is increased. Things like army, hiking and police clothing have larger pockets which increase your storage. The weight plays a factor on how much energy you burn so just beware of that as well. Last point on clothes, if you swim or step in water or if it rains you're gonna get wet and then you're gonna get ill. If you're wet take your clothes off and dry them using the fire or switch them out for something dry. If you want a quick semi solution and your clothes are soaking wet, take them off and hold them and the option to wring them out will appear which will make them damp. So you'll still get cold, it's just a little safer than them being completely wet. This is the last point on clothing. Keep an eye out for shoes, they can wear out and when you're in the middle of nowhere and they get ruined, your feet bleed. This is annoying and sometimes deadly so maybe switch out to different shoes whenever you find them if they're in better condition or keep a spare pair with you. Next is items. A knife and an axe are almost as important as food for survival. With a knife you can cut rags from clothes to heal, open canned food, cut sticks and bark to help with fires, skin animals and even shave. The axe can do all of that but the last two with the added benefit of being able to chop down trees for wooden logs and building fires. Now a knife can be found in most places but I found houses are most likely to have them, especially in kitchens. If this fails, their paths and beaches and railway tracks contain small stones you can use to craft a knife by combining them. If you're just starting out, you'll likely be near some tracks so just keep running down until you find stones. It can take a while but they are there. They can be quite far apart but don't give up. Axes and hatchets are in shacks around industrial buildings and in the little sheds around houses and gardens. You can also find an axe in the fire station almost every time if it hasn't been looted. But I stick to looting houses because it lets me loot adjacent sheds and greenhouses covered in my search for general items, tools and foods in one sweep. I will again tell you later on what are the best houses to loot. Weapons 
Now obviously the police station has weapons which is usually a large cream and yellow building with a glass house on the top but adjacent sheds and buildings can spawn similar loot too. Military bases inland have the best weapons but they're usually filled with zombies so be careful. Furthermore almost all industrial estates so basically anywhere with warehouses have security buildings and they have some great weapons there to use as well. It's important for you to learn to identify these buildings when you're looking for something specific on your list you know where to check. If you need a tool or an item look for industrial if you need food or general items look for houses if you need a gun look for a military building a security shed or some sort of police building you are more likely to find these things exactly where you think they will be once you get inland including medicines and medicines is next Oh wow, this is a whole video itself, so I'll keep it as simple as possible and not go into too many specifics. Medicines can be found at hospitals or similar to police stations in surrounding buildings and on close Roman zombies. Your biggest threat to focus on are contaminated water and food, common colds, infections and blood loss. There are many things, but these are most likely the things beginners will encounter a lot. For colds and flu, remove your helmet, hats, masks and gloves and keep them off until cured. Don't go near friends because a cough will spread the illness from and to you. Treat it with tetracycline pills and if possible, multivitamin pills on top. Take one at a time and a pill icon will appear in the bottom right next to the virus icon. And only take one pill. Do not double stack these pills unless you're mixing vitamins with tetracycline pills. Do not take two tetracycline thinking it'll have double effect. It won't. It will just waste the pill. You can stop taking them, however, when the virus icon is gone. Once that is gone, you no longer need medication. Codeine will not cure the cold but should stop you coughing for a while and multivitamins can lower the risk of you catching one. Though none of these pills cure it. Oh, and a thermometer can help you identify what illnesses you have. If it's higher than 38.5, you probably have a fever. God, I hope this isn't used. Or rectal. If you eat raw food, earthworms, rotten vegetables or fruit, poisonous mushrooms, disinfectant or petrol, or if you eat and drink with dirty hands, such as bloody hands from killing chickens, you will get ill then too. The best way to tackle this virus is with charcoal pills. They are the best way to cure food poisoning and don't eat too quickly or too much or you'll throw it up and lose it all. Take smaller bites, never letting the bar go above yellow. Also, keep washing your hands at water sources. It's easy to forget, but if you don't have the right medicines, you will die. Tetracycline pills can also be used here. Depending on the virus, its effectiveness varies. But using these alongside charcoal pills is likely the quickest way to get healthy. Cholera is caused by drinking dirty water. Tetracycline pills will cure it over time. The best way to not get this is to empty every bottle of water, as I said earlier, and refill it at a well when possible. Or clean the water before you drink it with water purification pills. Another problem is blood loss. I hate this so, so much. Obviously, when you lose blood, you need to wrap it with rags and bandages as soon as possible. But sometimes you lose lots of blood and it takes forever to go back up. Blood loss is indicated by the blood drop symbol at the bottom right as it deplete your screen will change color the less blood you have the more black and white the screen will go make sure you wrap your wounds try to wrap them with bandages or rags you can get these from combining clothes with a knife or technically sewing kits can be used to heal wounds too but all wounds can lead to the possibility of an infection. So since patch 1.13, infections have been something that can negatively impact your time in DayZ. Really, they will kill you slowly and just, it's really unpleasant. And I'm going to tell you how you can prevent this. Infections come in two stages. Both can be treated differently. It will show up in the bottom right as a germ cell like any other illness. And it usually comes after receiving and then treating a wound. And how you treat the wound determines whether or not you'll likely get an infection. For example, using a sewing kit, rags or bandages all carry the risk of your wound becoming infected even if you let the smaller wounds heal themselves. However, if you apply a tincture or disinfectant or iodine to the bandages, rags or sewing kit before using them, you'll heal without the risk of an infection. So always try to do this when possible. This is the only way to prevent you getting an infection. Though what's a good note is if any of your disinfected items take damage, they will no longer be disinfected. I found this out the hard way. So, the first stage of mild infection and how to treat it. This can be identified by your screen slightly jolting as your player grunts. This can also affect stamina regeneration time, slowing it down to around about half speed. This is the best time to treat it. You can do this by applying tincture, iodine or disinfectant straight to the wound. So hold it in your hand and then press the action button. If it's still in stage 1, which I'd say lasts around 15 to 20 minutes, it should go away in about half a minute to a minute. The second stage, however, comes with all the symptoms of the first stage except it's a lot stronger. You will now have a fever and your player will let you know about it. Your ability to fire guns is infected too and your aiming will now be all over the place and shaky. But the two main issues I found with this is firstly, 
your water drains so much quicker. Like it just drops. So dehydration is a huge risk. This coupled with your health slowly dropping leaves you in a situation where, well, you're probably gonna die and disinfectants won't help here no matter how much you try it will not help the wound however what will help is tetracycline pills get them in you as quickly as you possibly can on two separate occasions i was cured by four of these pills each pill lasts around five minutes and i was back to normal health again but i can confirm while you're on these antibiotics your health will stop falling which is a really good thing because honestly it's I, as I say, it's a slow death. You just want to move on from that. But back to blood loss. There are a few ways to tackle this. Though none of them quick and easy for new players, it's very important. I'll keep it simple. You can transfuse blood from other players or you can take blood from yourself for later use. If you transfuse blood, however, you need to make sure you have the same blood type as the person you're transfusing from. There is a blood test kit found in most hospitals which allows you to find out. Failing to match blood types appropriately will result in death. To transfuse or store, you'll need a blood bag and an IV star kit. Also good to note, like in real life, if you transfuse blood from a sick person, you will get sick too. Blood bags with O negative blood is safe for everyone to use as O negative is a universal donor. Saline bags are similar to O negative blood bags. They are compatible with everyone and can be used in conjunction with an IV star kit to help replenish blood quicker over time. They should also increase hydration a little bit. And lastly, and quickly on medicines, morphine can temporarily give players a boost if injured so they can run and fight at full speed. This is useful if you're limping, though it does not actually restore any health. Epinephrine can wake up unconscious players or give you a stamina boost for 60 seconds if you're well. Codeine pills can treat injuries for roughly 5 minutes, increasing maneuverability, and splints, which can be crafted with sticks and rags, can help broken bones. Oh, and although you can eat humans, it's, it's not recommended. Cannibals live in some cities, and the more people they eat, the more they laugh. So if you do hear anybody laughing, just run away. They're going to kill you. They will kill you all the time. If they're laughing, they will kill you. This, I believe, is called Karu and cannot be cured. The only humans. Just don't. The only humans. You know, unless unless, unless you, like, really want to. But, but don't do it. Moving on. You should always be careful around police stations. I'm a freshborn. I don't care. So, <gasps> are they glasses? Oh, glasses. Nice. Glasses just make everybody look cooler. Like, have you, have you ever seen Morpheus without glasses? He looks like a sad egg in a suit. Usually there's quite a few... Oh, crap. Oh. Ah. Damn it. Still got the bandage. Ah. Come back here, coward. I have mastered the art of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ah, oh, crap. He has a friend. Ah. Right. That's it. Zombie. Oh. God. Damn it. I haven't quite mastered the art of friendship yet. This one time I thought I made a friend in Daisy. It turned out to just be a tree. Buildings and where to actually look. Like, really. It's all well and good saying look in places for loot, but when you start off, there are so many places and not all of them are useful. Okay, so here's my advice. Though I'm sure some may disagree and this only applies to early gaming, here's how I do it quickly. Use all houses to get general supplies, but some houses are better than others. Bits of food, clothing, the occasional weapon and so on, all found in houses. Specifically target buildings which require stairs to enter. They're usually good for loot. Oh, and log looking cabins are good for finding your first gun and other such useful items. Always check above the fireplace as well while you're looking in there. Never ignore the small shed, shacks or greenhouses in gardens or farms, but you should probably avoid large townhouse buildings or centre buildings you come across. They're pretty Pretty pointless. In larger cities where the buildings are all two floors, try and pick out buildings that stand out because most of these don't really have good loot. And when they do, it's so rare it's almost not worth looking in. Buildings with blue doors in these stretches of cities are definitely worth checking. The rest I'd probably ignore apart from what looks like a workshop or somewhere to eat. By the time you've cleared 10 buildings, you could have probably found better things in more special looking buildings. And when in these cities or any town, never ignore the small stalls because they have some really good loot in them. Sometimes food Food, sometimes medical kits, sometimes clothing, sometimes weapons, bullets, they're really good little houses. You can check cars quickly as well, including the boot slash trunk. They usually have some cool things in there, though most of the time it's hit and miss. Use industrial buildings, railway buildings, sheds, garages, and especially barns to find weapons, backpacks, knives, hatchets, and similar things. But I'd usually avoid the large warehouses and focus more on the side buildings if you're trying to save time. Again, they do have loot, but they're not worth the extra effort unless you're already passing by. Plus, they usually have zombies in them. 
Police stations, small guard shacks and hospitals such as long blue houses are an absolute must though hospitals are filled with zombies as a general rule. Fire stations can give you axes and cool clothes but I usually avoid these unless I'm specifically looking for an axe or that type of clothing. Military bases have some of the best loot. The further inland you get, the better the military bases are. Specifically, weapons, grenades and so on. Always loot here but be careful because again, zombies and players frequent these areas. And never bother with large tower blocks. The loot is terrible. I think you can find some tents sometimes but just avoid it. And one giant rule, loot all buildings I said don't loot if they're surrounding special buildings like hospital, police or military bases because they usually spawn similar loot. This all becomes easier the more time you put into day Z. You'll figure out what buildings to go to and you'll just go there. Once you get a general idea of what I've said here, you can just sprint location to location. This will speed up your efficiency significantly, though it's pointless if you don't know where to run and it's also a waste of hydration and energy. So don't just run everywhere unless you're confident you know where you're going, especially when starting. Sprinting can warm you up a little bit, but it also burns food and water much faster, so be careful. Also, what I recommend to new players who are really, really struggling is focus on one task each spawn. Forget about food and water, just focus on one thing. Maybe build a fire, hunt an animal, craft a fishing rod, learning a town, figuring out building types and what they offer. Don't worry about dying and don't try to do everything in one respawn. It's perfectly fine to spend 20 odd minutes building a fire to die of starvation and then respawn again knowing how to build a fire. It's a way you get confident and, more importantly, proficient in these skills. Everything you'll do, eventually you'll do these things on the fly without even thinking about it. No one started this game being amazing at everything. No one. We've all died a lot. Most of the time from stupid things. Even with hundreds of hours behind you, it's still easy to slip up and die of something ridiculous. But take the losses with the wins. It's normal to get worried about dying because you have cool loot, but that loot can always be found again and the more you play it, the quicker you'll find it. And finally, it's important to note that although you can download apps on your phone such as Eyes of Five that tells you where the map and where everything else is, plus you can use it on the PC, link in the description, the best way to learn is to try and familiarise yourself with spawn locations. Like always look at available maps to try and understand the layout and what it looks like from an aerial view a little bit better, but I recommend checking out my last video, link also in the description. But a few hours in, you'll start to see familiar places, a few deaths in, you'll begin to see familiar spawns. Just try to remember what route is your preferred one and then go from there. And finally, finally, do not give up. People's biggest issue with this game is it takes a little while to get started, but once you do, it's such an incredible game. Don't let the first few hours of steep learning curves break you. Eventually, you'll be spending less than 10 minutes on the coast before hitting the inland, which is where the game actually starts. Honestly, this game is not the first few minutes you're probably used to playing searching for food. That's not even a percent of what it's about. There really is so much more, so just hang in there. I can't even tell you how different the game is once you get past this learning stage. So, that's all I have for this video. It doesn't cover everything but it's pretty much covered everything you need as a beginner to survive it is the only beginner's guide you'll really need i'll add any updates if anybody needs any updates i'll add more videos in the future if anything changes so thanks for watching if you have any questions ask me and i'll try to respond also if you can give me a like and a subscribe i'd appreciate it as i said i'm a small channel and it helps me so much also it took me a really long time to make this video trying to help you so i would really appreciate you trying to help me um thank you for watching hopefully i'll see you in future videos and happy surviving. Got food, I've got armor, I've got weapons, and I'm ready to tackle the world one zombie at a time. Come here. Oh crap. Nope. I made a grave miscalculation. I am not ready. Wow. Well, I guess I live here now. Ah, oh, crap. There's a side door.